It's hard to believe that an estimated 11 to 13 million Canadians get food poisoning every year. In 2008, 23 Canadians died from maple leaf products contaminated with listeria. And due to that, maple leaf is now committed to becoming a global food leader. As a matter of fact, they just launched their food safety pledge. And part of that is to teach people like me and you how to keep our food safe at home which is where Sharon Beals comes in. She is a food safety expert and a mom, and you're gonna share your top five tips for us to keep our food safe at home. Absolutely. Number one tip. When you go shopping, what's the first thing you're head hitting? Are you hitting produce and refrigerated, and then going through the interior of the grocery store? Yeah, you would start off at the cheese for me, and then dairy, and then meat. Okay, think about temperature control. Cold chain management, as we'd say in the industry, is very critical because bacteria like to grow at warmer temperatures. So if you start with the dry goods and finish up with refrigerated, you save yourself some time that the refrigerated products are out of refrigeration. Then you get them into refrigeration that much sooner once you get home. Tip number two, keep it cold. When you're leaving the supermarket and you're not going home right away, even if you are, I always use a refrigerated bag. Oh, back. I get it. This one, like this. A refrigerated bag like this, or I even keep an ice chest with cold packs on really hot summer days. And as soon as I get home, the refrigerated products go immediately into the refrigerator. I don't wait around. Last thing is to make sure that when you're making a sandwich and you bring cold cuts out, Make sure you put them back before you enjoy your sandwich because, again, reducing the amount of time refrigerated products are not under refrigeration helps keep your products safe. Yes, yeah, say it with me. Keep, keep it, it cold. cold. Tip number three, wash your hands. Your mother was right. You should always wash your hands before you start preparing food. But why is it so important to wash your hands? Is it because of dirt or germs? What is it? You've got bacteria, you've got dirt, you've got God knows what on your hands. Did you just pet the dog? Did you just, God forbid, change a diaper and now you're going to go make a sandwich? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not I've seen that. that it's the diaper thing. Yeah, I've seen it. When you use water and soap, the soap will actually help remove the dirt, which removes the germs. 20 seconds worth of scrubbing, making sure you get all your surfaces, rinse it off, paper towel, hand dry, however you're gonna do it, and off you go. Tip number four, avoid cross-contamination. Now, I know a lot of you have probably heard this about having separate cutting boards, one for meat, one for non-meat items, making sure you wash them thoroughly. The other personal pet peeve of mine, folks that load up a plate with hamburgers on it, take it out to the grill, and then take the freshly cooked hamburgers, put them right back on the same plate that the raw product came out on. But here's one. Grab that bag for me, would you, Erica? You know, as we're all becoming more concerned about our environment, as well we should, a lot of us are using reusable bags. Do you wash your bags? Of course not. Well, think about it. You've got fresh produce, you've got meats in here, potentially getting bacteria on your bag. So to avoid cross-contamination, Make sure you get, keep your bags clean. Tip number five, always use a meat thermometer. We've talked today about making sure that from the grocery to the refrigerator, out to the grill and back, that we stay safe. You can't judge temperature by eyesight. Why is, but why is temperature important? Because certain bacteria, for instance, if you're grilling a hamburger or you're cooking raw pork or raw chicken, it's important to make sure that you're killing the bacteria and that can only be verified by using a calibrated thermometer. The other part of it is that you don't want to make sure you don't overcook because a hamburger cooked to 160 is a whole lot tastier than a hamburger cooked to 195 or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So use a thermometer, you get good quality, you also stay safe. Keep one out by your grill, keep one in your, uh, in your house. I've got them everywhere in my house actually. And I use them. Do you use yours? No, <laughs> I will, I will. Shake on it. Okay. All right, very good, because I want your family to be as safe as I try to keep my family. Well, I guess food safety is a partnership, so now you have the tips, use them, Please. I will. I Thank will. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you.